Producers, Fat Filter just dropped Pro Q4, the end of the year special. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what's new, what's improved, and what you need to check out when you get your hands on this incredible EQ. First up, adding EQ curves gets so much easier and even a little fun. All right, so the first cool thing about Pro Q4 before we get into the really fun stuff is this sort of outline. So as I drag up, you'll actually see right here, and if I click, that outline becomes an active filter, which is really great. So if I come up really high and over to the left, you'll actually see that it becomes a shelf. And that's the same thing with down here. That's a low cut. But if I bring it up, it becomes a low shelf and so on. So uh, really far down, we'll get a notch. This is just a really easy way to add filters or see what it's gonna be without having to add a filter and then change the type. So if I know I want a notch, instead of having to do three or four clicks, I just come down here and I'm gonna get a notch. Really, really great boost in workflow. Absolutely love it. Now the fun doesn't stop there. We've got the new EQ sketch tool. If I click right here, let's say I wanna low cut that and then boost it towards the highs. Look at that. The sketch that I've just drawn has been created with however many filter nodes Pro-Q4 thinks I needed. Next up, Spectral Dynamics. This is perhaps my favorite new feature and it's so OP. Let's check it out. All right, the next incredible new feature and it's probably the highlight in my opinion is the spectral processing for EQ nodes. I've got this piano here. And if I make this node a dynamic EQ, right? You'll see that the cut's happening very broadly, and that's gonna be based on the Q value of the EQ node. But that's quite limiting, or it can be. If you wanna be more precise and more surgical, you can use spectral processing, which will take this range and divide it up into individual frequencies or bins. And to do that in Pro-Q4, you just click right here you will immediately see that it's not a very broad one. It's actually happening way more precisely based on the incoming signal. We have more controls. If I click right here, I have the density. So this is how many bands are in there, right? So if I pull it all the way over here, it will be a much broader cut, almost similar to if I didn't have spectral on. So you can see it's, you know, it's almost like the same thing we had before. It's a little more precise, or a lot more precise, but it's still pretty broad. If I pull this all the way over now, you can see that like individual notes are triggering it. And of course we still have threshold controls. We've got our attack and release. We'll also apply to this new spectral processing as well as just the dynamic EQ. And we also have the resolution button over here. So we can go low, medium, and high. You can actually go very high and maximum, but you'll see that we'll get a warning here. And this says you can't combine linear phase processing at very high and maximum resolutions with a dynamic EQ. Now the dynamic EQ itself also got a couple of updates. So I've got my baseline. And we're gonna use a dynamic EQ node to duck it out of the way of the kick. So if I just click and drag down, that's a pretty standard cut there. And we don't wanna do that because that's just gonna cut no matter what. If I hold control and click right here, it will set the node back down to zero. And if I just come over here to the outer ring of the gain knob and pull to the left, I'm gonna get reduction dynamically. So right now it's reacting to the base itself. We're gonna change that in a second. If I click right here, you can see that we've got the band right here. If I switch this to free, I'll now have the filter. I'm not getting the sidechain signal yet. This would still be if I wanted to say, duck the bass out of the way of some upper frequency content of the bass. This might be helpful in drums and stuff, but obviously not bass. So what we wanna do is activate the external sidechain, which is right here. If I click that, I'm now gonna get the signal. Now, depending on what type of DAW you have, you wanna send the sidechain signal into the Pro-Q4 in Ableton Live. That's right down here. I'm just gonna use the drum loop. And now if I go ahead and play, you can see that that's reacting, but we don't know what to. 
So there's a couple of ways we can do that. If I click right here now, I'll hear what the filter is listening to. So you can see right now I'm filtering the sub bass to the hi-hats. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but that's what's happening. Now, another way we can do it is turn off the headphones and come to the analyzer and just engage the side chain. And now we'll see the purplish bit is the bass and the red is the drums. So now we can use that and take the filter over to just where that kick is happening. And we can even, again, engage the headphones just to be absolutely certain. And now we can just go from here and do whatever we want. We can pull down how much of reduction is happening. We can adjust the threshold. And now that we have the attack and release parameters for a side chain, you generally want the attack to be super fast. And the release, I would say, I'm just going to leave it where it is. It's perfectly fine. And you just need to make a decision from there on how much you want to cut. And it's that simple. Now, once you've got Pro-Q4 scattered throughout your project, and you've got all your filtering you want happening, you're gonna wanna check out the new instance view. So when you have multiple Pro-Q3s in a project and you come down here and click, you can now see it all in one spot. This is my sort of little navigation window and I can go up and down, but I can also zoom in or zoom out and really see what I want. I can use my mouse wheel to go up and down or use this little navigation window over here. And whatever one you have selected is what will be used to show masking. So right now I've got my vocal and if I play it, these red highlights are telling me, listen, that's where masking is happening for whatever you have selected. In this case, the vocal. Now I can also come in and tweak any of these that I want. Isn't that crazy? Now the fun doesn't stop there. If I click right here, it will become even more dynamic. I love it. If I hover over something, it will get bigger so I can make more precise adjustments. Now this will be relative to whatever the size is. So depending on how much you need, and again, my mouse wheel will allow me to go up and down or this little menu over here. Truly fantastic. We can search for anything we want. We can also use pins. So once again, let's come to my vocal. I wanna pin my vocal. I wanna pin the strings, the piano. And now if I come over here, I will just see whatever I've pinned. Now renaming can happen inside of here. It will by default take whatever the channel's name is, but if you want to rename it, you can just do it inside. And now that's what it will be. It won't change in your DAW, but it will change here. And in terms of colors, so if I come out of here, it will update depending on whatever color you have. If I want to change this to a dark blue or let's go pink, you'll see that it's updated over here. Absolutely phenomenal. There are a couple of DAWs that won't update titling or colors. You'll have to read the manual for that, but in Ableton Live, it all works. Now, there are a couple of other features that are worth noting when you're inside of here. One, I can copy this and paste it somewhere else. Boom. The two new character modes are also an incredible new feature. Another seemingly small, but actually pretty great new feature are the character options down here. So clean will be pretty much like Pro Q3, which is ultra transparent. Subtle will add a little bit of warmth via saturation and warm will add more almost tube style saturation to the signal. These will actually affect the audio passing through the Pro Q4, whether or not you have filter EQ nodes on. Now, let me show you. So I've got this. And if I just go ahead and turn it off, you can see here, that's just a peak, right? Watch what happens if I turn it on warm. It actually adds a harmonic here. So you can imagine as you begin to have a more complex audio signal running through, it's going to add more complex coloring to it. 
So that's the normal or the clean, subtle. So I would say it's really subtle. Um, definitely happening again in the really high frequencies over here, but I can't really see too much more of a difference. However, when we go to warm, you can really start to see. So if you see like right here, the dip happening, that's where the differences are. So you can see it on a lot of different places here. Definitely in the low end, right here in the mids to lows and over here on the highs. Like it's happening all over the place and it's really coloring the sound. And just a couple last shout outs of what's new and improved. There's also a new filter node called All Pass. This is what it looks like. You can adjust the cue and the frequency position. This can introduce phase adjustments without changing the gain. Another updated feature for those who are super precise, the low cut slope here. You've got all of your presets, but you can now go between those presets. Before you'd have to choose, I believe there's actually more here than Pro-Q3, but before you just have to switch between these, but now you can actually come down and let's say I want 39 or 38.5 it will make that adjustment for you if you need to be that precise. There's just a few other things I wanna read from the list for you because they are very significant, but it's not something I can show you in the video. Improved dynamic EQ processing for less distortion and a cleaner sound. There's improved precision and linear phase processing. There's also improved analog matching in zero latency and natural phase modes and a bunch of other minor tweaks and improvements. I'm sure there'll be a full list on pluginboutique.com if you wanna check it out. Now, not to mention it looks better than Pro Q3, which is an achievement in and of itself because Pro Q3 and all of that filter stuff looks amazing. You need to check it out. Click the link in the video description. And now I'm going to keep cranking away at this because I want to know everything it has to offer. Hit the bell, subscribe because those videos will be coming soon.